Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy Kenny, and this is the Haves and the Have Not Season 6, Episode 28. And the name of this episode is Stronger Together. Okay, the wait is now over, you know, the break is over, and now we are back and we are full swinging. And I would have to say this was a pretty, pretty um, decent episode, and I can't wait to see what's about to happen next. So, uh, let's begin. So, um... The episode picks up where it left off, where Benny finds the $45,000, which has now become blood money because uh, Malik's blood is on the money, and it's probably going to be a matter of time before they connect his DNA to the money, so I already see down the line it's going to be some shit, but Benny finds the money in Kansas room, in Candace's room. And he's asking her about it, and she's denying it, saying, it's my money. He was like, no, this is my money. You know, and he starts to put everything together. Like, how the hell did you get this money? Because, you know, I know mommy said that he went in my room, and he stole this money. So how do you have it? Um, and then she's saying that the, the this blood on this money is this guy's blood from when mom stabbed him and he's like why do you have it and she just continues to lie you know that's my money you know um you know I, I got it from working John's and shit and he was like how much money is it and she couldn't give him an answer it's like well I didn't really count it all because you know I still have more money to add to it I'm like Candace is such a habitual liar the bitch will still lie even though she just been put on front street. So Benny was like, you know what? I'ma count this shit. And if and like um and if it adds to forty five thousand dollars, God forbid, because he was heated. And she's like, but Benny, he's like, shut the hell up. I was like, damn. Benny was mad and he was heartbroken because he starts to put it together that Candace put a hit out on their mom to get that to get those millions. And then he counts the money and it does add it does add up to forty five thousand. And he's like, You hate mommy that much, you know? And he was like, You will send somebody over there to hurt her just to get this money? And she was like, He wasn't supposed to hurt her, he was just supposed to shake her up. And that was it. And he's more like looking at her like, what the hell is wrong with you? You know. You know, so you were so desperate for this money that you would send a fool after mommy to get it. And he was just and she was like, well, get her to sign over the money. And he and, <laughs> and Benny was like, I ain't giving you shit. <laughs> I was like, wow. So Benny was just over it. He was like, you know what? I'm so heartbroken that you would do something like this you know and but then she was like well i have to get the money because he's gonna kill me now we already know malik done bled the fuck out in that van and then her and rk torched the van so malik is dead buried and stinking up in that van and as i said it's just a matter of time before they do some forensics and they connect his dna to um what you know they pretty much connect his dna to hannah's house as well to that damn guad of money that he stays now sitting on that he borrowed from the Malones. So it's gonna be just some crazy shit. I mean, bombs are about to go off, seriously. So he gets to the point, he's like, no one has ever broke my heart the way that you just did right now. And Benny is really hurt that she did this shit. And it just goes to show you that Candace is fucking savage and she went nuclear, meaning she's went to a place where she's never gonna go back. So, once Benny starts walking out the door and he opens the door, Gia's ass is there and she was like, oh, oh my bad, I'm sorry I got the wrong room. That motherfucking Benny pulled her ass up in there and he was like, oh, so this is what you doing? You got your little hoes you know you be throwing at, you be throwing at me so you can distract me so you can do this bullshit that you did with mommy? You know, just like you did with Erica's ass? And I'm like, yeah, little do y'all know Erica's, you know, has been burnt to a crisp and there's there's no point of return for that bitch but anyway 
So all of a sudden, he was like, so that's just it? You just send one of your little hoes after me? And damn, just to think of it, I done slept with her too. And I'm like, oh shit, and we see Candace fucking jump up like, because you remember, she told um, um, Gia not to sleep with Benny. But hey, we already know Benny got that hot dick, just like Candace got that hot puss. And once they in, once they in it, oh trust me, you gon' you they gonna break you off. So, Cause really, at the end of the day, she couldn't resist Benny. Benny practically was throwing the throwing the D at her. I mean, especially after he stripped down, you know, she was she was through. So afterwards, Benny leaves, and she was like, um. So G was so so pretty much Candace like what the hell you want, and she said that look um the police has been asking around about Oscar or whatever, and she was like why would they be asking around it was a suicide and she's like yeah I know that but people have said they seen you talking to him around the bar and all that so you're a person of interest and they probably want to ask you a few questions, you know, and she was just like look I'm just looking out for you, but then Candace flips it and was like. I thought I told you not to sleep with him. She was like, look, uh, I had to do what I had to do. I had to hold him somehow. So, it's whatever. That damn Candace gets the fuck up and straight bitch slaps Gia. And was like, now get out of my room, bitch. I was like, and that damn Gia made that damn face like she wanted to hit Candace back. But she probably knew that Candace would fuck her up. So she kept fucking walking. Then we get a scene with Veronica and RK. Remember the last time we seen them? Veronica's working out a plan. And lo and behold, RK is so cocky and full of himself, he don't even realize that he's literally working with the devil. And so pretty much we see that, you know, she done fed him breakfast and everything. And he pretty much tells her about Officer Justin, you know, that he arrested me for you know a DUI which was a lie he arrested him because he robbed this guy you know while pretending to be gay and then he says so so what happened you know what's going on you know and and she was like well the thing is he arrested me for a DUI but then he cleared up everything and let me go he's like and can't and Veronica's like uh uh tell me the truth and stop fucking lying because I know he wouldn't just let you go that easy so he lets it be known okay so what he did is that he rent. He took me into a room, and he he and he started to fill me up or whatever. But I got no erection, so he just you know let me go. And but but then, you know what he did was that he decided to pass me around to Jeffrey, kind of throwing it up in Jeffrey's face to make him jealous or whatever. But then, um, when I saw Jeffrey again at the hotel, he didn't recognize me. I remembered him, but he didn't recognize me, and. Then he saw us again at the hotel together. So, Veronica's like, "Well, this is interesting, you know. Yeah, I want you to. I want you to continue to go after my son." And he was like, "Look, I already told you, I, ain't, I, ain't, I'm not really gay. I just." And she's like, "I know, I know, you know. Um, but you know, what I want you to do is get him to like you." And he's like, "Everybody likes me." And, and she's just like, y'all cocky ass. But she's like, look, I want you to keep tabs on him. You know, I know where he is every minute of every day. And he was like, he's like, damn, you on some straight, you know, on you like on some straight, like, you know, FBI type shit. And she was like, yeah, I'm a mother. I'm like, no, bitch, you're fucking crazy and you're insane. Cut the bullshit, Veronica. So... So pretty much she says that if you do this for me as payment, I'll get rid of your whole um, folder, you know, his crime history, and that he'll have a clean start. So of course he shakes on that, but not realizing you just shook hands with the devil, bruh, so this shit ain't gonna work out in your favor. Later on, he ends up going to sleep because he got the itis from eating all that damn food. She wakes him up and says, call my son. You know, he's driving home right now as we speak. And, she, and he's like, how the hell you know all that? She's like, don't worry about that shit. Just get up and do what I asked you to do. Um, and then and then she's, then she's like, you gave me a good idea about how to handle that officer. I'm going to have his damn badge. So what I want you to do is I, wanna get, I want you to get Jeffrey to fall for you. Which is going to upset um, old girl, you know, 
aka Glenn Close, and it's gonna piss him off, and then I can take him down that way. And then all of a sudden, he was like, "Man, you twisted." He and he was like, and she was like, yeah, "Call it whatever you want, but yeah, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna make this shit work." So she's like, "Get your ass up," and he's like, "Man, I'm tired." And he, he's like, "Look," and she's like, "You really think this is a game?" And he's like, "No, I don't, but." You gonna see what's really what's what's gonna you're gonna see what's really good if you wake me up again. I'm like, RK, there you go with that young cocky shit. You're gonna fuck around and get yourself taken out before you even get on the chessboard. Like doing too damn much. And and then she was like, Oh my god and Veronica's like, Oh my goodness, I just so like it when these little boys try to act like they big daddy. I need a man. I really I need a real man. And all of a sudden, um, RK was like, you do know I can hear your ass, right? And she's like, I don't give a fuck. But yeah, so that was the last we saw of them. Then we actually get a scene with Benny and Derek. At first, you know, Benny comes into the house and, you know, he's like, what the hell? Because um, Der Derek was sleeping on the couch. And he was like, what the hell you doing here? You know, you don't live here. And, and he was like, look, I was just here, you know, making sure your mom is okay before I leave. But he's like, don't go upstairs to bother her. And and then he was like, so tell me, bro, what you here for, huh? What, you want her money? You just trying to get on to her because she got this nice house? Well, we don't own none of this shit. And she ain't got no money. So if you really trying to, trying to you know, make a score off of my mom, you, you, need to, you need to roll the fuck up on out of here. And Derek's like, it ain't nothing like that. And besides, we both want the same thing. We want her to be happy. And besides, where I come from... A woman like your mother, you respect her. And all of a sudden, we saw, we saw a change in Benny. And Benny actually sat there and started to talk to him like a man. And that's the way it's supposed to be. It's man to man. But then he, un but then he respects Benny because he sees that Benny is her protector. Yeah, he's her son and he lives with his mother. But he protects her and he got her back 100%. And he lets, he lets Derek know that, look... My mother is the only thing got in this world, and I'm not going to let nobody hurt my mother. And he's like, I, I know that. Um, and he was pretty much telling, and Benny was telling him that, look, she's been through a lot. You know, and then he puts it out there that my damn sister then sent the damn, sent somebody over here to, to, um, to hurt my mother. And he was like, your sister? And he was like, yeah, my sister Candace. And Derek is just puzzled, like, your sister did this shit? And he was like, yeah. And she said that, you know, I just can't believe she would do something like this. And Derek was like, well, you know you can't tell your mother. He was like, yeah, you know. But then Derek was like, look, I know some people. I can find out the guy who did this and I can make sure that this shit gets handled. And he's like, oh. And he was like, and then all of a sudden Derek, um, Benny was like, you know some people. He's like, yeah, I was young once. He was like, "Oh, so you got you find you you going some old school shit," and like Derek started laughing. He was like, "Yeah, yeah, but I'll let you know. I'll find him. You know, whoever did this to her because she didn't deserve this." And and he pretty much says that, um, "Yeah, keep working on that." But then he said, and he tells Benny that Benny, you really look tired. You need to go upstairs and get you some sleep. And Benny actually goes and he tells him that, "Look, you can stay on the couch if you want to." So I was like, that was a good moment where we saw, finally, he ex he's beginning to accept his mother's new boyfriend. And he's stopping all this dumb shit. You know, because at the end of the day, mama gotta have a life too now. But if y'all can just be cool and respect each other as men, and that realizing that both of you are men that's gonna protect her, then it's gonna be all good. Then we get a damn scene with Broderick and Catherine. Now Broderick is the manager, the hotel manager at the Artesian, and he has been plotting to get Catherine for her money. So we pretty much see that he goes there and lets her and lets her know about there was a suicide, you know, Oscar quote unquote suicide. He tells Catherine about it, but then he also says that, you know, due to the fact that you're on the board of directors and you hold most of the shares. I want you to know what's really coming up ahead because due to the fact that they're investigating, they also found something else. They found a prostitution ring. 
So I'm like, oh, Broderick, you grimy piece of shit. So here it is. You about to fucking flip on Rocky and everybody at the fucking hotel so you can make Catherine your main score. Because, you know, Catherine is worth millions. So I'm like, oh, Broderick is really playing this shit. But then he also puts it. Then he also puts the bug in Catherine's ear that Jim was involved because he was messing around with one of the prostitutes. So Jim can be implicated in this. And and he's like, I just wanted to come and tell you this because I wanted to save you the embarrassment and and you hearing it out in the street. She was like, Look, my husband can't keep his pants up, so <laughs> it ain't no embarrassment. It is what it is. He's always been like that. He can never keep his pants zipped up. Um, and he can never keep it in his pants. And we see later in this episode, he's ready to bounce on another young piece too. But I'm about to get to that shit. And then um, we see that that damn Broderick starts flirting with Catherine, saying that why would he want to do that with a woman as beautiful as you? You know. And we see that he's making his little moves, and Catherine's starting to glow. And then all of a sudden, he says, "Okay, well, I'll get back." But then he lets her know, "If you want me for anything." And I mean anything. You can give me a call. I'm like, oh, Broderick, you really, you really smooth with your shit. And then all of a sudden, she all of a sudden when um, Broderick leaves, we look at Catherine. Catherine's like, <laughs> oh shit, Catherine, he done stirred your grits, huh, baby? Mm-hmm. She about to give him that good old, you know, that good old Georgia loving baby. <laughs> like, cause Catherine was just like. Ooh, I mean, because it's probably been a while for Catherine. I think the last person she had sex with was Jim. And, you know, Catherine's kind of over that shit. So she's like, fuck Jim. I need to get me, I need to have me some fun. So we're going to see what's going to happen with that. But then we know at the end of the day that Broderick is actually trying to screw her out of her money. And we, he, so he's using this shit to get Catherine, to get into Catherine's good space so he can take advantage of her. So, oh yeah, I'm going to talk about them because that's pretty much what happened later. Um, so then, oh yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Later. Okay, then I'm going to talk about David and Jeffrey. I'm just going to go through this real quickly. Um, we see that, you know, David is calling Erica's name and all of that, you know, and he, he pretty much said that, you know, your mother did this. You need to stop her. But then he was like, yeah, I know. I know we need to stop her. But then he tells Jeffrey to go home or whatever. And he's like, I got a guard outside. Everything's going to be okay. And and he was like, what's going on with that boy that ransacked the apartment? You know, he was like, he was like, you, you, um, have you got rid of him yet? And Jeffrey was like, well, I'm trying to do it slowly. And he's like, why slowly? And he's like, look, you know, he's been through a lot. And I just don't want to, I just don't want to break his heart. You know, I really want to do it with my, well... The problem with you, Jeffrey, is that you're completely blindsided for the fact that you're in a relationship with a motherfucking psychopath. And there is no slow way. You just need to make a complete, clean break and fuck the bullshit. Because I'm saying, like, there's a part of Jeffrey that likes the bullshit. And his father's starting to catch on to it, too. Like, what you mean slowly? Get rid of this motherfucker. This nigga ain't good for you. And he's doing too damn much. And trust me. Glenn Close showed her royal ass tonight. So I'm definitely going to talk about that shit. Because I'm like, yo, Tyler, I love you. I'm a big fan. But Tyler, you either need to put Glenn Close in a padded room or put her six feet under. Because I can't take no more of her damn shenanigans. Because sh that, damn, that damn Justin is doing the most. And... And pretty much he says that, um, so pretty much David and um, Jeffrey have this conversation and he asks Jeffrey to move in with him. They can be housemates, you know, and he says that I got a big house, so there's plenty of room for the both of us. And he was like, and then Justin was like, so you wanted me to move in with you so you can keep, so you can keep me away from Justin. And he was like, hell yeah. Like, he said, I don't want this crazy motherfucker with my son. And he was saying that. And he pretty much kind of explains that, you know, Justin's drowning and I just don't want him to fall apart. But then <laughs> David was like, yeah, but I'm not going to let you drown either. I'm like the, the test of a good father. But then he pretty much saying that, you know, um, I'm sorry for how the way your mother treats you. And 
I want to make it up to you. And Jeffrey's like, it's not your fault. And David says, yes, it is. Because I allowed this shit for far too long. And I can't, t I can't do it anymore. He says, I, you know, I got you. You know, I got you taken care of. And he's like, well, Dad, if you're really trying to look out for me, I, um, I could use a new car. And he was like, don't push it, Jeffrey. But it was a good moment. But he tells him to go home. And I'm like, I hope that once he leaves, something doesn't happen to David. Because, you know, you got fucking... You know, you got you got you know um, Glenn Close doing her bullshit at the hospital, and then you got damn Veronica who could get access to that room too. So we're gonna see what's gonna happen. Then we get a scene with um, with um, with Derek and Hannah. You know, he makes her breakfast, and she says, "I gotta go in the bank. I gotta go to the bank in a little bit." And he asks, um, he, she asks about Benny, and he tells her that Benny's upstairs asleep. And he says, okay, so what did he say about you staying here? He says, she's like, oh, it was cool. And she was like, uh-uh, I know my son. What did he say? He was like, he saw something. He's like, well, he's like, look, man, uh, you ain't gonna be staying there. But like, and she, she cried him like, yeah, you sound just, it yeah, sounds just like my son. Yep. Um... But he pretty much, but she pretty much thanks him, and he was like, "Why are you thanking me?" He was like, "Well, thanks to Catherine giving me that happy pill, because we saw the last episode. That damn Hannah was geeking like a motherfucker. <laughs> she was like, ooh, Catherine gave me that good, good,' and she was just tripping with it. And then she also um, lets him know that. But I also felt great because you were here. You made me feel safe. And he's like, "I want you to always feel safe with me." I was like, ooh okay Derek but there's some still speculation I'm not completely sold on Derek like we all think that he could be the possible guy that raped um, Hannah when she was in her teens but we just have to keep watching and see if that's going to be revealed or something else but we definitely know he was you know rolling in the hay with Veronica's ass and he used to do some dirty shit for her so and she also got the 411 on his on his past so we're gonna see what's gonna happen with this but it's good to see that you know that the two of them are really connecting they sat and they prayed and they ate and we see that you know Hannah feels safe with him but then again will she always feel safe with Derek and that's what we're gonna see later on so then we see then now I'm gonna talk about what the meat of this episode we see that damn Wyatt's in the damn um, jail cell tweaking like a motherfucker. And we see that Sal, who's the hitman, is there. And he's pretty much saying that, you know, how long have you been in here? And, he, and like, Wyatt's like, what the hell? What, is, what does that matter? What, why do you want to know that? And he's like, look, I can tell that you're tweaking. You're on heroin. You know, it must be hard being in here where you can't even get what you want. You know, you know, you can't get what you need and shit. But then he starts telling him that um, I'm a butcher. You know, I kill people. You know, and you got some people who think they can do anything and think they can just run away and get away with it. But I'm the enforcer. I'm there to let you know that if anybody fucks with my family, they get dealt with. So pretty much, you know, he said that, you know, isn't there going to be a change of shift soon? So... You know, we're just waiting and watching, and I know you're waiting for that cop to come back to give you a hit, you know, because you need it bad, because you just look horrible. So then, he pretty much asked him, so what's your family's name? He's like, and he was like, why do you want to ask that? And he's like, I don't, you're like, you talking about your family? I just want to know. Well, he says, well, my name is Salvador. You know, my name is Sal, but my full name is Salvador. And he's like, okay, so what's the last name? And he's like... Malone and he's like you heard of us and then all of a sudden he's like I bet you you definitely heard of us because all of a sudden we see that that damn Wyatt starts bitching up and shit and the first time he goes after Wyatt Wyatt starts screaming guard guard and the guard came and stopped him the second time you know some time went by and then he tried it again and um you know, that's when he starts, like, uh, that's when he calls guard, guard, guard again. And the second time, it's Justin. And Justin tells him, tells old boy to sit his ass down. And then we see that he's tweaking. He's like, you know, come on. 
like, he's like, you got what I need, Justin? You got what I need? And Justin's like, yeah, but are you going to give me what I need? And he was like, he's like, you got it? He's like, yeah, it's pure and it's uncut. And he was like, oh, okay, you know, come on, take me to a room, man. Get me, get, let, let, you know, let me get my fix. You know, take me in a room. I'm like, why aren't you fucking idiot? You ain't clocking the fact that you're going to have to give a little something to get something. He ain't just going to get you high and he ain't going to get nothing out of you. And we can already see with, with you know, Justin and his sadistic, Glenn Close looking ass that he definitely is going to try to bitch Wyatt out. And we see that once he, you know, he pretty much tells him to put his hand behind his back because he has to handcuff him. He takes him in the room, cuts off all the cameras. The same shit he was doing with Jeffrey, he's now doing to Wyatt's ass. And I'm like, yo, this dirty motherfucker. So while that is about to happen, outside of the jail, we see that Jim is there. He reached out to that lawyer that, um, that David had told him. And we see that um, he sends his daughter, who's, um, who's an attorney. Her name is Austin. And... Austin's a pretty piece, and we already see that Jim is already trying to put his meat up in her because, you know, Jim is just that nasty with it. And then, you know, she pretty much says that, you know, I'm trying to break away from my family, run my own practice. I'm trying to do my own thing, you know. Um, and she pretty much says that, look, you know, I had to call my uncle to get the, um, to, to work this out because she's there to, 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 um, to get bail so they can get Wyatt out of there. So... So we see that go on, and we see that, you know, he been flirting with her. So she pretty much says that, look, we just have to wait for the paperwork to get in and everything's cool. So she gets a call. She'll, she's on the phone, and gets and she tells him that, okay, everything is good. They go to the front desk, and they let him know um, we can't let him out yet. So until the paperwork updates in our system, which could be about 30 minutes to an hour, we can let him out. But we can't let him out right now. So we got that going on outside. Back into the damn room where um where justin likes to take his victims you know he takes wyatt up in there and he pretty much kind of lets him know like you know he's like you know um he's like so um uh, am i gonna get the stuff and he was like yeah but it depends on what you want to do won't you get on your knees he's like but he's like come on man just handcuff me he was like oh no baby you won't need your hands for this but what you got to do, like, look, this is what people do all the time to get favors up in here. So if you want me to help you, get on your knees. I'm like, oh, that damn Justin is a dirty piece of shit. And that's why I told Tyler, you need to do something with his ass. Because I am so spent off of Glenn Close and all of her shenanigans. And why is like, I'm not gay. What are you doing? And he's like, well, come on, man. You really want this? And then he starts pulling it out, toying him like, come on, man. I mean, either get on your knees or I can take you back in the room. And you think I won't drag your ass out of here and take you back there? I don't give a fuck what happens to you. But if you really want to get your fix, you need to fix me. You know, make me happy. And then he unzips his pants and was like, get on your knees. Come on, Wyatt. Come on. Come on, Wyatt. Come on. And I'm like, you dirty motherfucker. And all of a sudden, we see Wyatt toying with it, and he's kind of like, you son of a bitch. But we see that other part, like, ooh, I, that, that, that white shit look good, and ooh, I really need a fix. And all of a sudden, we see that that damn Wyatt starts to get on his knees, and I'm like, mmm. So here we go. As we've been saying about Wyatt, Wyatt didn't have more dick than a dude at a damn gay club, okay? For him to say he not gay... Uh, when it come down to that drugs, oh, trust me, you'll, you'll bend over and toot toot for the, um, you know, to get, you know, to, uh, you know, to get your fix. So next thing you know, we saw him get down on his knees and he's about to suck Justin off. And just when that was about to happen, damn Austin and Jim walks in and immediately Jim knows what the hell's going on. Cause he, he's, he sees his son on his knees and he sees Justin standing over him. And that's where the episode ended. And I was like, oh, this is going to be some shit. But I'm so happy that the Haven't Had Nots is back. And yes, this was really good. But um, that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. 
But uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all of my social platforms. I have them all listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of the Haves and the Have Nots. So until next time, everybody, take care.